The first three months up here were the most difficult for me. I was broken physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. I had to be broken on every level. And the reason I had to be was because when I prayed and I said, okay, if this is what I'm meant to do, then please, Creator, use me. Allow me to be a vessel. In order for me to be a vessel, to be used, I had to have my attachments broken. Because attachments make us solid. You can't be a vessel, a true vessel, if you're attached. You have to be emptied out first. You have to be shaped and formed. When I climbed into the tree, I was still very attached to comfortability. I was attached to fear. I was attached to anger and frustration and sadness. I reached a point where it was learn and transform or die. Two days after the men pulled out from having been siege, the worst storm came. It lasted 18 hours. And it was howling. <laughs> it sounded like wild banshees, the tarps. Like that, but times like a thousand. Just... The wind was so hard that the platform was tilted at an angle like this. It was just a constant 60, 70 mile an hour wind that had the platform tilted. And then the 90 mile an hour gust would come and wham, and just fling me. Just whoop, I went flying. I worried about it a lot, like when it was raining, when it was cold. Like last winter we had snow and ice up there, like, like icicles hanging off the tree and stuff. And I can't imagine what she was going through when it was like that cold. It's interesting how this experience has taught me about letting go of attachments. And I thought I had let go of all of my attachments. I'd sold all my belongings. I'd been living in a tree for a couple of months at this point. You know, I'd really been proud of myself for letting go. But that night I realized the one thing I hadn't let go of was my attachment to my own life. And I was trying so hard to stay alive that I was clenched. My teeth were clenched, my eyeballs were clenched, my muscles were clenched. It's like maybe if I just clenched hard enough, I would hold on to my life. And meanwhile, it's just Wah! And hail's flying at me and bouncing off of me and I'm getting hit with sleet and I'm sopping wet and getting thrown all over the place. And the hardest gust is when I, I literally flew like three feet over a branch of Luna. And I grabbed onto it. I don't want to die, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. <laughs> I want to be strong for you, Luna. I want to be strong for the forest, but I, don't, I can't even be strong for me. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then I heard this voice. Think of the trees in a storm. Okay, I'm thinking. <laughs> it started to come to me, and I started thinking of the trees in the storm. The trees that try too hard to stand up strong and straight are the ones that break. The only ones that make it through are the ones that bend and flow and let it go. Julia, now is the time you too have got to let it go. You can't be strong, you can't stay attached, not even to your own life. You got to bend and you got to flow. That's the way to make it through this storm and that's the way to make it through the storm's life. So I did, I let go. I started hooping and hollering and screaming and laughing and crying and if there'd been a hidden camera, we would have gone, she's nuts. <laughs> and I was, but that's how I made it through. And the reason I made it through is because I let go of my life. It was like, okay, if I die, I die. Because I've let go of my fears now that come along with being afraid to die or being afraid to get hurt, they don't have any control over me anymore. No one has control over me anymore. You want to hurt me? You want to stoop to your lower self? Bring it on. Because you're not taking my love, you're not taking my exuberance, you're not taking my zest for life. And when I go, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna howl and rage to the very end, you know? And that storm taught me that lesson. <laughs>